Our lives are in their hands when we most need help, and almost every time they do their utmost to save us. But what happens when first responders don't respond? Jim Avila with the incredible story. They are supposed to be, and most of the time are, our lifelines. The people who, when we are in danger, literally answer the call. Just like Halle Berry in the Hollywood movie, The Call. 911, where's your emergency? I'm trying to break into my house. I'm but old. what if we are in trouble and they are sleeping? Like the 911 operator in Miami, Florida, who was taking a snooze in the dispatch center and her colleagues also fast asleep. The police department says they were officially on break. But what about this dispatcher in Rockville, Maryland? So tired, he's actually caught on tape snoring. Could you send any um, ambulance or anything right now? Sleeping, clearly not OK. What about dancing? Like this EMT who was driving his ambulance home at the time, reprimanded for his hands off the wheel seat dance to Rihanna's Pour It Up. The singer tweeted, the paramedic guy just reminded me why God sent me here. That sent the video into the Twitterverse stratosphere. All kind of funny, true. But unfortunately, sometimes when first responders are instead worst responders, there can be tragic, not funny at all results. Wow, 13209 rolling in the avenue, outside in the parking lot. All right, we got, we got, bear with me on the line. Here is where that call came from. Medrick Mills, a Washington, D.C. Parks employee for nearly five decades, taking his daughter Marie to the computer store to buy a laptop. But this happy sojourn turned into a 911 disaster when Medrick suffered a heart attack. You're walking out of the computer store. And yes. He's right around he's here. He's right around here. And he kind of falls next to the... Falls next to the car, yes. If you're going to suffer a heart attack, it appeared Medrick Mills had picked a pretty good spot to do it. First of all, his daughter was close by, and then, luck of all luck, right across the street, engine house 26 of the Washington, D.C. Fire Department. But as the seconds tick by, that firehouse remains strangely quiet. I mean, the fire department is across the street. Yeah, we understand that. We're going to have fun away, okay? What's going on in the firehouse filled with life-saving equipment is hard to fathom and impossible to explain. Because although there are five firefighters inside, none comes across the street to help. In fact, the lieutenant in charge, instead of immediately getting out of her bunk, asked for the exact address of where Medrick was dying not 100 yards away. Another firefighter came outside, but did nothing more than gaze at the chaos across the street. So you're actually going like this. I'm waving my arms because I know, I, I just know that he's seeing me because he's standing with his arms folded, looking this direction. And to her horror, he turned around and went back inside. So how long would it take for emergency personnel to get from here, the firehouse, to there, the parking lot where Medrick Mills was dying of a heart attack? It took me less than 30 seconds to cross that street on foot, but on the day poor Medrick lay here, a full 11 minutes after the first call, paramedics had still not arrived. But as bad as that was on this terrible day, there was a second critical error. The ambulance that was dispatched was initially sent to the wrong address. So where were the paramedics? Let's take a drive. It turns out they've been sent to the wrong side of town, two and a half miles away from where Medrick Mills collapsed. A day of botched signals and no excuse inaction, the Washington, D.C. Fire Department won't even try to justify. When someone knocks on the door and says there's an incident across the street, they should have responded immediately. Does it bother you that one of them actually went back to the bunks and was studying? Yes, that was even more horrendous. The lieutenant who wouldn't initially leave her bunk retired with full pension. The most anyone else got was a 60-hour suspension. That's right, 60 hours. You're so upset, I don't want to hang up with you. I want you to stay out here with me. There is no doubt first responders have stressful jobs. They get hammered with ridiculous calls, supersized complaints about the price of a burger. OK, what's going on there? I was at a McDonald's. I paid $10, and these guys gave me one burger and a fry. Sir, this is not a police matter. I got robbed for my money. The 911 operator wasn't loving that. I'd say the vast majority of them are not 
technically emergencies, probably 75%. A steady diet of silly calls and other people's genuine trauma forced former 911 operator Jeff Hewitt to quit, he says, after only four and a half years on the job. Still, he says, there's no excuse for what happened in Nashville, Tennessee, during this call for help from a woman being threatened by a knife-wielding boyfriend. Wait for it. I really just don't give a what happens. Yeah. 911 operators are trained to be the responsible party during an emergency, but sometimes they're not. So what can you do? In Tampa, Florida, this mom calls 911 after accidentally locking her toddler in the car during a heat wave. Hi, um, my infant son is locked in the car in the parking lot. Cops on the way, right? No. The dispatcher somehow needed to hear more distress. They won't be able to, to, to try to get gain access to the car. Uh-oh, uh the child is in some kind of distress. The toddler finally rescued by a motorist who took a wrench to the window. The baby's okay. The dispatcher is now in the hot seat. The dispatcher absolutely made a mistake. This is not the way we do business. In Michigan, this 911 operator, suspended for two weeks without pay, teaches us that no matter how long you have to wait for an ambulance, don't swear, as this desperate daughter did while watching her father's brain seizure. Get the beeps ready. 911. I need an, I need an ambulance to drive heart rate. Well, okay, first of all, you don't need to swear over 911. Okay. And slow down. Ambulance. But the dispatcher had already hung up on her, so she called a second time, and still 911 refused to send help. 911. Are you going to give me an ambulance? Are you going to swear problem? again, you stupid Are we going to have a huh? problem? No, you're Are not going to have a problem? One. The burnout rate for dispatchers is typically three years. Most people don't make it beyond that. And finally, this tongue-in-cheek insight from our insider. The next time a 911 call is in order, have your emergency Monday morning because by Friday, the stress has reached epic proportions for dispatchers. It was just almost unbearable stress. What you have to do is kind of compartmentalize your frustration and your anger because nobody calls you on the best day of their life and say, oh, great, thank you, yeah, 911. For Marie Mills, who lost her dad, she has no advice, just a simple request for the first responders who did not live up to their name. Just do what you were trained to do what you are supposed to do. Just do your job. Just incredible waving to those first responders across the street not getting help. Tweet us, use the hashtag ABC2020 if something like this has ever happened to you. And up next here, if someone at work says, I'm just exhausted, wait until you hear this. The Sharks from Shark Tank are here with a message for your complaining coworkers.